10 peoples that might have discovered America before Columbus 2020 During the 1960s, a Viking settlement was found in Newfoundland, Canada that started before Christopher Columbus's notable excursion by around 500 years. The disclosure broke the possibility that Columbus was the essential individual to locate the New World, outside of the indigenous people who had been living there for quite a long time, clearly. So if the Norse could do it, who else may have sorted out some way to cross the ocean blue before 1492? Here are ten speculations that have been proposed by teachers chronicled focus specialists, and fledgling history masters. We covered this point six years earlier, so it seems by all accounts to be reasonable that we do an update. Number 10 Polynesian Voyages The epic trips of the old Polynesians breathed life into the 2016 Disney film Moana. Starting around 3,000 years earlier and using sea boats, they colonized New Zealand. Hawaii, Rapa Nui, Easter Island, and everything in the center. Their association of islands by and by suggested as the Polynesian Triangle was greater than forefront Russia. The Polynesians probably made it to South America before Columbus. Sweet potatoes, which are neighborhood to South America, were being created on Mangaia Island and Hawaii several years prior to European contact. In 2007, chicken bones dating from 1321 to 1407 were found in Chile. Regardless of the way that there isn't yet DNA confirmation to exhibit an association, Polynesians were known to bring the delicious winged animals around the Pacific. An examination of Rapa Nui Islanders demonstrated that DNA from South America appeared in their hereditary stock sum place near 1300 to 1500 AD. In any case, how is it possible that it would show up? Some trust South Americans traveled over on balsa wood barges Thor Heyerdahl extensively traveled a multiplication from Peru to Raroia Island in 1947, yet various experts acknowledge that there Unparalleled vessels and progressed wayfinding of the Polynesians, really used today, is impressively almost certain. Number 09 Japanese fishermen in 1475 Middle-aged cod fish total The Hanseatic League wouldn't offer cod to the British port of Bristol. The English who revered fish expeditiously started looking for a workaround, a wealthy customs official named Thomas Croft. A couple of upheld fish-finding efforts drove by seller John Jay, whose course of action was to find an amazing dimness-covered land west of Ireland called High Brazil. The official record says clearly that they didn't find it. Regardless, rapidly some time later, Bristol started acquiring a questionable proportion of fish. Thomas Croft was caught for illegal trading, just to be cleared it primer. So where were the fish coming from? In 1956, a letter created by an undercover specialist for the Spanish Inquisition was found in the Spanish National Archives. It is seen as certain, the incognito employable communicated that the cape of the said land was found constantly beforehand by the men from Bristol who found Brazil, if the Bristol fishermen found the rich cod stocks off Newfoundland. They would normally need to keep it an industry secret. Truly dreadful Christopher Columbus let the truth out. Number 08 Irish Monks not long after the death of St. Patrick, another Irish heavenly individual was visiting the zone. Blessed individual Brendan was nicknamed the Navigator for his excursions to Scotland, Wales, and Brittany to spread Christianity. In the 9th century, a semi-unbelievable, semi-genuine record of his excursion transformed into a middle-aged bestseller in The Voyage of St. Brendan. St. Berinthus uncovers to Brendan that he has as of late returned from paradise, a land far past the western horizon. Brendan reasons that he needs to see it for himself. 
He gathers a group, a cowhide-bound Irish curra boat, and some sublime charitableness before setting out. The group experiences a captivated world, including damnation, where remarkable malicious existences threw down bits of bursting slag from an island with streams of gold fire. Could this be a reference to Iceland? Besides, if the Irish showed up at Iceland, would they have the option to have followed the Viking path directly over to Newfoundland? To test this speculation, understudy of history and swashbuckler Tim Severin successfully travelled a calf-skin-bound curra boat from Ireland to the New World in 1976. Consequently, it is possible. Number 07 English Merchants in 1475, middle-aged codfish blend the Hanseatic League would not offer cod to the British port of Bristol. The English, who worshipped fish, immediately started looking for a workaround. A rich conventions official named Thomas Croft a couple of upheld fish-finding endeavours drove by transporter John Jay, whose plan was to find an amazing fog had land west of Ireland called High Brazil. The official record says clearly that they didn't find it. However, instantly a brief time frame later, Bristol started getting a questionable proportion of fish. Thomas Croft was caught for unlawful trading, just to be vindicated at Prima. So where were the fish coming from? In 1956, a letter made by an incognito usable for the Spanish Inquisition was found in the Spanish National Archives. It is seen as certain, the undercover usable expressed, that the cape of the said land was found constantly previously, by the men from Bristol who found Brazil, if the Bristol fisher found the rich cod stocks off Newfoundland. They would legitimately, need to keep it an industry secret. Truly dreadful Christopher Columbus let the truth out. Number 06 A Moorish Daredevil. The Arab savant Abu al Hassan Ali al Masazudi, who lived from 896 to 956, depicted in his acclaimed history book The Golden Meadows that a Moor named Koshkhash had travelled into the Atlantic. Nobody knew for a long time what had befallen them, he communicated. At last they got back with rich merchandise. Although the book fails to make reference to where Koshkash got his products, Muslim analysts have proposed he wandered out to the Caribbean islands over 600 years before Columbus, in the 1960s. A compartment of various Roman and 28th century Arabic coins was found tidied up off the shoreline of Venezuela. These were used in Middle Age Europe driving some to consider this verification for Koshkash's excursion. However, there is close to no information about the coins, including, as one researcher put it, whether or not the holder was an earth amphora or a pickle compartment. Number 05 Two Venetian Brothers in a Norwegian Nobleman in 1558, Niccolò Zeno disseminated a best-in-class book of letters that he declared had been in his family record for a very long time. They were from his uncommon amazing unprecedented granddad Antonio Zeno and his staggering uncle Niccolò Zeno, who clarified their endeavours daring to all aspects of the Arctic, in 1380. Niccolò Zeno travelled from Venice to Flanders. Starting there, as shown by the substance, he was destroyed on an island called Frislander and ensured by a sovereign named Zichimni, who was busy with vanquishing everything in sight. Niccolo stayed in contact with his kin Antonio and together they helped Zichimni win heaps of battles against unprotected islanders. The book similarly joined a guide they evidently drew, which is a semi-careful depiction of northern Scotland, Iceland, and Greenland. Modern researchers suggest that Zichimni is an incredibly inaccurately spelled Orkney, as in Henry Sinclair, Earl of Orkney, and that the islands referred to a correspondingly butchered names for islands in the North Atlantic. It's moreover been suggested that Henry Sinclair and the Zeno can traveled past 
Greenland and followed the Viking approach to Nova Scotia longer than a century before Columbus. In 1998, the Prince Henry Sinclair Society of North America revealed a milestone at his supposed landing spot in Canso, Nova Scotia in the desire it would draw explorers. Number 04A Roman Explorer In 1933, a minute pottery form head was revealed at an ancient investigation site in Calix Loaca, Mexico. The face was beaded, with unequivocally non-Mexican features and wearing an abbreviated cap. Ernest Boehringer, an expert in classical archaeology, investigated the head and announced it to be of 2nd or 3rd century Roman origination. However, how could a Roman head end up at an obsolete investigation site required from 1300 to 800 BC? One theory is that the figure head was determined to the site as a joke. Dr. John Paddock used to tell you his classes at the Universidad de las Americas that it had been planted by Hugo Moadano, an understudy who worked at the site. It in like manner may have been an error in the work area work, since archaeological standards during the 1930s were a smidgen looser than they are today. Or on the other hand, a speculation that by and by can't be disproven, it might be verification that a Roman progressed toward Mexico in pre-Columbian events. Number 03 Chinese Treasure Ships During the 1400s, China was the world's most significant sea power. Their fortune ships were portrayed as the size of the World War I vessel USS Minnesota and went all through Southern Asia, the Indian Ocean, the Persian Gulf, and the east shore of Africa. If the Chinese had expected to cross the Pacific, they obviously could have. Former submarine pioneer Gavin Mendes acknowledges that a Chinese fortune task force coordinated by Zheng He went farther than the others, exploring Australia, the Caribbean, and regardless, leaving settlements in South America. However, he had minimal evidence to help these cases until Chinese legitimate counsel Liu Gang found an old guide in a Shanghai utilized bookshop that showed North and South America in stunning focal point. The guide contained a note saying it was a 1763 copy of a 1418 novel about the date Mendes had claimed the map making network accepts the manual for be a fake. China and Hong Kong are stacked with outdated compositions that can be bought on traffic crossing points. And the guide is stacked up with naming botches, including a serious Chinese speaking of Muhammad. Not really ironclad evidence for a cross-country venture. Yet rather extra affirmation might be out there. Number 02A Mali Emperor Mansa Musa controlled the Islamic Empire of Mali and was rich so much that when he went on his 1324 excursion to Mecca, he left behind so much gold that the expense dropped around the world. Notwithstanding, when got in some data about his kin Abu Bakr II, who held the seat before him, Mansa Musa expressed, the ruler who went before me didn't acknowledge that it was hard to show up at the restriction of the ocean that circles the earth, which implies Atlantic, and expected to show up at that end, never to return nor to offer a trace of life. Malian scientist J. Usudiawara acknowledges that the clarification Ali Bakar II stayed away forever is that he showed up in Brazil. Specifically, the city of Recife, whose other name of Pernambuco might be an irregularity of the Mande name for the rich gold fields of the Mali Empire. He similarly alludes to aggravate assessments communicating that the gold on American spears may have come from Mali in a report by Christopher Columbus saying that he had encountered dim intermediaries on his voyages, whether Abu Bakr II made it to Brazil or choked in the Atlantic Ocean. His recipient Mansa Musa sat down and turned into the best sovereign in Mali history. Number 01 Basque Whalers In 1530, the Basque were whaling in Newfoundland. 
In 1535, when Jacques de Cartier found the St. Lawrence River, he found around 1,000 Basque fishing boats already procuring cod. This makes them the chief Europeans to get settled the zone after the Vikings. The Basque are an uncommon social affair of people that live on the edge of France and Spain. They are socially exceptional, and their language Euskera has no comparable qualities to those of their neighbors, so they don't do a lot of bantering with untouchables. Shipbuilders and mariners were a serious long time, they were ace pilots and fishermen, either the Basque plunged at the time Columbus returned, or they had a head start, possibly from seeking after whales over the Atlantic. Taking everything into account, they were exceptionally satisfactory at protecting fish for long excursions. There may yet be a pre-Columbian Basque settlement clutching be found in Newfoundland. Thank you watching this video like, share and subscribe my channel.